Hello everyone and welcome back to Mod Development in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video I explain the Surestrut Engine Pack. In the process of making the RP2000 tech tree, I came upon a situation. Basically, I'm putting the existing manufacturers over in these slots off to the side and you basically have to do a separate deal with them for their parts because this is simulating the year 2000 and of course if you're a startup you will have to treat them as partly competitors. Their prices will be much higher than if you develop stuff on your own. Developing stuff on your own is what the bulk of this tech tree is, this center portion. And of course if you develop it on your own that stuff will be cheaper but you have to uh, put up the development cost up front. Now the thing is that in Realism Overhaul Practically all the engines are configured as a real engine, right? Uh, even the stock parts are configured as real engines, so they go in these slots with the existing manufacturers. They are, you know, even the, the Chinese engines that I had made here, or Aerojet Rocketdyne engines like the RL-10 or the AJ-10-190. They're all real engines, which means that there were no engines for you to develop except for a few that I had made for the EDB and uh, maybe some old old engines like for instance I've been using the Error B rocket and the Scout rocket and the Thor rocket really old stuff that the, none of these companies could reasonably lay a claim to anymore but there's a limit to that right I mean when you think about Aerojet Rocketdyne is still trying to make a new F1 engine you know of course they're going to want to maintain some control over that but yeah so I needed a way to fill up the tech tree a little bit more fortunately I do modeling <laughs> so uh, and I have modeled other engines so I created a engine pack that would have generic engines that weren't real engines but were had real stats of course and so all these SE engines that you see here are from the sure strut engine pack in order to fill up otherwise this gen advanced rocketry slot would only have the FL T400 fuel tank which would be pretty sad right I mean what's the point in having the tech tree like that so we have a lot of RCS ports these are all the SE ports and such I'll we'll go into VAB to take a closer look at them but so now we've got stuff up to heavy rocketry heavier rocketry uh, we've got other things for like my Sajita rocket and all that business, but yeah, so we've added some useful parts. I still need to tweak them. The numbers are sort of round numbers, like 60 instead of the exact number that ought to be out. I'll, I'll crunch numbers a little bit finer in order to get the real numbers. And I've only priced them temporarily. We'll still have to work with that to see how that works. That engine needs to go somewhere else, but yeah. So that's the idea. Perhaps more interesting is the way I did it. The way I did it, and I've got the file open in Blender here to show you, is I cut up the existing engines that I had made, like the Raptor engine and all that. I took the meshes. The meshes had already been in multiple pieces for coloring purposes. And so I just sort of separated them out and kitbash them. Basically, I mixed them up and recombined them into new things. Sometimes the meshes needed a little bit tweaking to make that work out. But you can see these are all the little pieces. We got various uh, turbo pumps and all that, pipes and wires and um, RCS port type stuff here, and nozzles and nozzle extensions and that sort of business. And what this allowed me to do was because we're just mixing and combining these. Uh, they already they are textured and basically for the same set of textures about 20 megabytes worth of textures I can just keep making engines more and more engines and so that limits the size of the mod and really for RP2000 I don't want people to have to go out and get this mod that mod that mod that mod a whole bunch of different mods in order to get the parts they need to build the rockets so I'll just make the parts <laughs> so so you don't uh, so you'll just get the Shearstrut Industries packs for the mod for RP2000 instead of having to go get this engine from this place unless you want to I'll try to make them compatible but 
um, unless you want to use BDB or something like that, um, in which case they'll probably be under the existing manufacturers, you can use the generic ones that I'll be trying to make. So this is how I did it. And let's go to the VAB to take a look at the engine results from this kind of system. Well, unfortunately, there's more SE things than I need here. We'll just get one of these fuel tanks and work around it. So there'll be a good reference, I suppose. Fuel tank for scale. So we uh, scroll out a bit. We start with the tiniest thing. There's a four Newton RCS port for really small things. Oh, look, we can't see it. Uh, there it is. Can you see it there? Four Newtons. There's also a four Newton RCS block, just in case you really, really needed one of those. They're under miniaturization, can you tell? And uh, this is a 14 Newton RCS block. These are just um, monopropellant. So it's HTP, nitrous oxide, helium, or nitrogen. You can't use anything else with them. And actually, they're a little bit less than four Newtons because that's judging from MMH and NTO. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, those. This is also this is actually the full range of possible uh, propellants for the RCS, including I decided to add on my own methylox just in case. So that is a 40 Newton version with the full range of fuels. And there's also an RCS block that's like this. So we sort of need to, oh, there we go. I even did the wires. So, yep, there is a block like that. And there's more RCS port. That's just a larger version of that one, of course. There's a block version of that one. I mean, if you scroll out, it makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> Otherwise, it looks huge. And then this is just a single engine that is 100 Newtons. So that's an engine engine, not RCS port. But there's an RCS port version of that. It's the same model. It's just the same thing. And then this is a block. This one is 100 Newton RCS block. And this is a one kilonewton thruster. That's a one kilonewton thruster. It's a higher chamber pressure than the RCS. That's why it's smaller. So that that one only does the the hydrazine. That's only a hydrazine one. This one is a MMH and Mon three one. I feel like this one is not scaled right. I'll have to check that. Anyway, I'll look into that. This is more interesting. This is like the Falcon 9 RCS ports. They're big. These are two kilonewton thruster RCS ports. So that's a two kilonewton thruster RCS block like that meant for recoverable stages. And this is a 400 Newton RCS thruster, 400 Newton RCS block. And this is another version of 400 Newton RCS block uh, based on the ones on the lunar module. So if we scroll in, you can see uh, the fact that we're using shared textures is obvious, but also sort of helps because it keeps the size down while making them look good. And then this is a four kilonewton engine. So not a thruster. There's a hypergolic engine, MMH and Mon3. Then we get to the bigger things, 30 kilonewton, copperish, low tech kind of thing. Then uh, there's an A version that is better technology, and you can see a better looking chamber there. And then this is a cryogenic one. This uh, baselines with uh, methane and oxygen here. So that's a methane oxygen 40 40 ish kilonewton. And then a more advanced version of that methane oxygen engine is that one. You can see similarities between this and that, but there are subtle differences still. This is a 12 kilonewton thruster, a little bit different from, uh, this is the 4 kilonewton one. You can see there's a little bit more sophisticated looking. Uh, this is a 60 kilonewton engine. This is gas generator. These are pressure fed. All this is, has been pressure fed. So they tend to have larger nozzles because they have low chamber pressure. This is a gas generator engine, so high chamber pressure. And uh, this one uses kerosene and oxygen. And then there's an advanced version of that, kerosene and oxygen one. Basically, the main difference is it's got a computer uh, to control fuel and it can throttle. 
as a result. So it's a throttling engine as opposed to the original. And this is a vacuum version of the same engine. So just a vacuum nozzle. I don't know why it came out sort of bluish on the tint, but I think I'll keep it. It's interesting. Uh, so those are the, yes, 2006 series. And this is, uh, that's the advanced version vacuum. And this is the original version vacuum. There's a subtle difference between the nozzles between the two. You can maybe tell like that. Anyway, then the 2008 is an 85 kilonewton engine using methane oxygen. These were all kerosene oxygen. Though I'll probably create a new configuration so that they can switch between hypergolic fuels like MH and uh, MON3 or UDMH and NTO or aerosene and NTO and kerosene and oxygen. I think that's fair. The um, methane oxygen one here also has a more vacuum variant and an advanced vacuum variant with an even longer nozzle. I think that's that's that one, right? No, this, this is the kerosene one. Advanced vacuum variant and... Oh, no. Okay, regular vacuum variant and advanced vacuum variant. This one has throttling. Okay, so... This is a 200 kilonewton kerosene engine and gas generator, as you could tell. This one is a 400 kilonewton. It says gas generator, but I think I meant this to be uh, stage combustion. I'll have to think about that one. Anyway, uh, sometimes I'm just randomly putting pipes and hoping for the best. Uh, but uh, that this one is hydrogen and oxygen now, and that's 400 kilonewton. And that one has a longer vacuum nozzle. That's a serious vacuum nozzle right there. And yep, that's, and then this one is methane oxygen. So this one was kerosene oxygen, 200 kilonewtons. These are 400 kilonewtons. This is 600 kilonewton methane. Again, the difference in chamber pressure is what causes it to be larger. I, th I guess this must be some sort of um, uh, expander cycle or something because it, it doesn't have the which got normal gas generator exhaust but it doesn't have the high chamber pressure of a stage combustion engine so anyway I have to read my own mind from when I was making it so this one is a 600 this one is a 600 kilonewton gas generator methane oxygen engine um, limited nozzle ratio as you can tell and then we have a 1,000 kilonewton gas generator kerosene oxygen, 1,500 kilonewton hydrogen oxygen, and then 2,000 kilonewton methane oxygen. Again, uh, subtle differences in the pumpage. Mainly the main, the main chamber and the nozzle are similar, though you can tell a difference in piping here. A little bit of difference to sort of change things up with this kit bashing. So there you have it. That's the array of engines. Altogether, the pack currently is 50 megabytes, which is pretty small considering the general texture quality, I think. Um, but again, I have some work to do with it still. I think the plumes need some work, uh, shifting them down. The Plumes always give me trouble. Also, it'd be good if there were different engine configurations that you can un unlock after a little while with more advanced technology, that kind of thing. So, yeah. But anyway, this should simplify being able to use RP2000 without installing a whole bunch of things is my goal. Of course, procedural parts will give you the tanks, so it'll be fairly simple with that. But if you have some thoughts, maybe some kind of engine that you would like, well, I could just kit bash it together and we will see. Oh, it looks like I've got some normals that need to be fixed on this one, huh? I'll link it in the video description as it is right now and you can tell me what you think or if there's any flaws. But there you have it. That was the idea. And I hope you like it. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.